I, I think that it starts with the fact that we have very similar um, artistic tastes and tendencies. And so our vision tends to be a cohesive yeah. idea. Um, and we don't really argue a lot about stuff because we we tend to like the same things and we and yeah. we tend to want and, and right. a lot of and especially because we write, you know, most of the stuff or at least rewrite and polish we, we, everything we do. Um we're so close to it, we've already yeah. worked through it. So we finish a lot of thoughts in writing, like we'll be writing and she'll start a sentence and then I'll just it just comes out, I'm finishing it and she's perfect. And then I and then I then she does the other character and then we start to have a dialogue and we start acting out the scenes right there in the office. And so it's well, between uh, the script and then pre-production, yeah, really we are really, yeah. um, we like, we're really specific about everything that we want to put on screen. So by the time yeah. that we finally get there, I think that we have a pretty good, a pretty good yeah. idea. And we don't really have a lot to fight about except for fight for something together. This episode is brought to you by the best-selling book, Rise of the Film Entrepreneur, how to turn your independent film into a money-making business. Learn more at filmbizbook.com. Com. I'd like to welcome the show, Janina Michael Damien. How are you guys doing? Hi. Hey, Alex, hi. It's so nice to be here. Thank you for having us. Oh, thank you for coming on the show. This is a, like a Christmas special episode because I haven't had a like a Christmas heavy filmmaking, you know, partnership on before. I mean, looking at your <laughs> filmography, you guys are fairly obsessed. Uh, <laughs> we should have some decorations yes, in here. Right. I just realized we don't have any decorations in this no, room right now. Actually, no Christmas. No Christmas heavyweights before. That's yeah, cool. we're, we're honored. We'll take it. We'll take it, buddy. <laughs> so before we get started, Janine, I have to ask you one question. What was it like working on the set of Captain EO? <gasps> Whoa. You know what? That was a career highlight, I have yeah. to say. Um, for, everybody, that- for everybody listening, Captain EO was a short film Directed by Francis Ford Coppola, produced by George Lucas, starring Michael Jackson in 1983, something like that, 84, 85. Oh, my gosh. In that, in that yeah. world. So yes. it was when Michael Jackson was basically at the they just made a they made an amusement park ride around Michael Jackson at that point in time. That's how big he was. They did. And wow. it was I remember seeing it at Epcot and many times, and I've watched it online ever since, but I've never spoken to anybody who was on set. What was that like? It was it was phenomenal. You know, the production design was by the production designer who did Blade Runner. So yes. um, so there was all this steam and all this crazy smoke in it. And, and, and um, it was really loud, actually. And Michael had to speak with ev- to everybody with his with a microphone. And, there, and when we first we actually hadn't rehearsed with Michael, we, we rehearsed without him. And then he came up, out on set and the very first take, you know, you've got Francis Ford Coppola yelling action. You've got George Lucas, who's created this 3D camera for this movie and, and bleachers for guests like Elizabeth Taylor, Nick Cage. And, you know, it was just this celebrity bleacher over there. And Wait, I was in the bleacher. And Michael was in the bleacher. I got to invite Michael because Michael was a celebrity too. Yeah, so I was there watching it. And they, um, and so when he yelled action, Michael Jackson goes, and it was rainbows flew out of him and it blew all our hair back. And we all messed up the choreography, the first take, and they had to redo it. Um, but it was really amazing. It was an amazing experience. So it's what, that's one of those special ones. I mean, I, that's like a, it's a, it's such a, it's in the George Lucas Coppola and Michael Jackson, all of the, like, with a Epic. short film with an insane budget that n- never would have had happened any other way other than if it was an amusement park ride like it's it was, i mean angelica houston was was the was the wicked witch as well that's so. right i forgot angelica she, she just she they did such really, a great job i can't recognize her but she was there yeah. too. she was terrifying and fabulous <laughs> tell, tell them about um the music wasn't loud enough when they first started and michael jackson couldn't feel the music Obviously. and the rhythm and so he quietly so he gets he gets on the microphone and he says, you know, I'm sorry, I can't feel. It. I, I'm not going to try to to to, to, <laughs> to do an imitation of my here. Anyway, he says, I'm sorry, I can't feel the rhythm of the music, and until I can, I can't work. So thank you very much. And then he and Macaulay Culkin, who he came, brought with him, um, left, and we all stood there and said, okay, what's happening? And so they said, well, we're going to take a break, and while we're waiting, they bring in these 
ginormous stacks of Marshall speakers that go from all the way to this to the ceiling of the, of the soundstage. And that and then the music was so loud that, you know, we came back in and Michael was happy. Everybody's happy. We're shooting. And then we get a visit from next door and they were shooting um, Matthew Broderick um, and Ali Sheedy in yeah. War Games. War Games? Is that the yeah. name of the movie? Yeah. We're in War, War Games. Games. And they said, well, we hear you, we're over here, so we can't work now. And so we had to stagger our shooting between War Games. It was either War Games or, uh, I think it was War Games. Or Space no, it's War Games with John, John Badham directed that one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, so that was kind of, that was, I don't even know how they worked that out, but they worked mm -hmm. it out to where we actually rotated who was going to shoot when. That's awesome. So, That's insane. I know. That is it's, kind of, it's a great thing story though and it was really um it was intense and amazing and we had a phenomenal photographer so how long did you guys shoot for by the way um it was, it was i'd say a month that we were wow. on i mean it was also it was uh we had rehearsals as well and then they shot up shot a bunch of stuff without us without the dancers so um yeah, it was, that was a big production we were on that show for i i i was on it for a month but i don't i don't actually know <laughs> Well, I had to, when I saw that in your filmography, I had to ask you. So thank you for indulging me. I appreciate that. <laughs> now, how did now how did you guys meet and start collaborating and working together as a direct producers? Oh, how, how did we meet? Well, we met on an airplane and I thought that Janine's dad was her boyfriend because I didn't know at the time. And I later found out it was her dad and it was awesome. And I was like, oh, great. Because it was one of my favorite actors, James Best, Roscoe from the Dukes of Hazard. So oh I was like, so he's got himself a young girlfriend. I like her, <laughs> but I want to make her mine. So I started singing Jesse's girl, Roscoe's girl, no. Uh, and we met uh, in Utah, uh, going to the Osmonds uh, Children's Miracle Network telethon. And uh, that's when we first met. And then um, we started writing together. Janine was dancing. You know, she was on the show Solid Gold. She was dancing with, as you know, Michael Jackson, Prince, uh, uh, you know, George Michael, Elton John, Diana Ross, Lionel Richie. The list goes on and on and on, a mile long. <laughs> and so I was doing uh, Young and the Restless and my music career, uh, rock, you know, tours and, and uh, uh, Broadway and all that. And we just started, we started writing together uh, we we started with a script, a, a short story script, right, actually, in New York. Yeah. We started it there. And... Well, Michael started, he wanted to, um, he wanted to try the other side of camera. So he actually was the impetus to us trying to write together. Actually, he was writing and he said, well, we can write. And I said, well, we can't write. We're not writers. Well, Janine really helped me a lot. <laughs> you are. You are. She's <laughs> a natural born writer. He's the kind of guy that, that he doesn't take no. He doesn't put limits on himself. And so it was really amazing the way we made that career pivot uh, together. But it started yeah. small and then yeah. um, just kept going. Can we do now, Michael, if I, it, Michael, if I may correct you, it's Roscoe P. Coltrane. If you, if you, if yes, Roscoe P. Coltrane. Yeah, yeah, you got to put the P. Coltrane. Yeah. P. Coltrane back in the day. Oh my God, solid gold. I remember watching that growing up. My God, that's I'm I'm going back for Michael Jackson. All those. Roscoe was Quentin Tarantino, who was in Janine's dad's acting school, and he was one of the oh. students. Oh, yeah, so he's the. He was the one that was teaching um, Quentin yeah. how to act back in the day yeah. when he was trying to be yeah. an actor. And he was encouraging them to write their scripts. And he brought scripts in from Reservoir Dogs. And Janine would rehearse the scenes with him because, you know, she was just an actor. Nice. Yeah, sure. yeah. And she would always she was very kind to everyone. And she was rehearsing dialogue in these scenes. She's like, it's kind of weird. All these characters with bizarre names and Mr. What were the was Mr. Pink, Mr. Blonde. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mr. Pink. Yeah, she was Blonde. like, this is kind of wild, you know, but he's really, you know, passionate about, you know, Clint, acting. And Clinton's never heard of this guy. Did he ever, did anything ever come out of him? Did he ever do <laughs> anything else? No, never heard from him again. <laughs> never heard from him again. Oh, no, Hollywood. Knows who he is just saw him at the world. Yeah, I just see him at the Oscars all the time. Besides that. Anytime you write something, you just see him at the Oscars. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, he's amazing. I love Clinton. So those are all really fun. These are all the movie experiences, you know, that we grew up in our, our background. You know, with Janine, when I say dance, uh, it, it's really important because she worked with Barry Levinson. She worked with uh, Paul Verhoeven. Paul Verhoeven. Oh, God, uh, yes. so the list goes on and on. Some great people. And I got a chance to work with Gary Marshall and a lot of uh, oh. fabulous TV directors. And uh, so... You know, this was our background. We were take we were like sponges, 
uh, not really knowing, not realizing at the time this would be transferred to the other side of the camera. We were just taking it all in as performers and, uh, and you know, great experiences and, and always listening. Uh, and, you know, uh, I had a great opportunity working with Andrew Lloyd Webber for two years uh, when I did Joseph on Broadway. And that was an amazing experience. So we got we got all these, you know, these amazing mentors. And that's really kind of that's where it started. So, I mean, you it was just pretty much osmosis at this point. You were just kind of absorbing it all, just being on set. Yeah. Yeah. From, the, from masters. I mean, you're talking about legends. It, yeah. Just, yes, exactly. It's really inspiring and a little intimidating, but but awesome <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> I mean, awesome. I can only I can only imagine being on set and just watching these these masters work and then just not knowing that this would all ever do anything else for you other than like, oh, you know, it's nice that I worked with Andrew Lloyd Webber and and Parval Hoven. We were fans. We were fans. And we we're like, it, it was great. And, and it's really great too. You know, we ran into Paul a couple of times and it was Paul, so, Verhoeven. Paul Verhoeven. And it was really wonderful to see uh, how he reacted uh, when, when he saw you, Janine. It was, it was. What did he say? He was, he was really nice to me. Yeah. So that was a, that was a really fun experience working with him. Cause he's kind of a little bit of a different personality than what I had oh. worked with before. They worked on basic <laughs> Basic Instinct. Oh, together. I know. I saw that too. I was going to ask you about yes, Basic Instinct. Yeah, you, you, yeah. you worked on Basic Instinct. You know, it's so funny. I have a funny Paul story, Paul Warhoven story. I, I reached out to his people a year a year or two ago. I'm like, hey, would you like to come? I'm a huge fan, Paul. You know, would you like to come on the show? And his agent goes, uh, Paul uh, is going to respectfully decline. Actually, I'm putting the respectfully in because he thinks podcasts are absolute shite. And, oh, no. <laughs> and oh I God. said, that is perfect. Because that's Paul Verhoeven. He's that's well. He he that's doesn't really punch. Punch, That's for sure. And, you know, he's just honest. Oh, he's so honest. But he yeah. made some of the greatest movies. I mean, just whatever, Mr. Verhoeven, whatever you like. But I just thought that was such a wonderful way. Of, <laughs> <laughs> it made it made so much Pretty sense funny. coming from him. It just like because I've know like I've heard stories about him and just seeing his interviews. He's just a he's an intense dude. But that's how he made his movies back back in the day. So they're great. Now, all these years that you guys have been in the business, I kind of believe that it wasn't all happy-go-lucky puppy dog tails and unicorns uh, the entire ride, right? I'm assuming as, <laughs> as, as actors and performers, <laughs> well, as actors and performers on on one side of, of the camera is one thing, and you guys get just the nose, the amount of rejection that you get as an actor. I'm assuming that prepped you for... The moment you said, hey, I want to be a filmmaker. And people are like, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> Pretty much, right? That's the biggest uh, no you get, actually, yeah, because yeah, um, I think yeah. that I, I think that today they're much more open to people crossing over. Yeah. And um, but at that time, you didn't you, I mean, you did yeah, film you, or you did TV or yeah, you that was it. or yeah. you did Broadway. Yeah. And um, and Michael is he's just he, he he the other day was saying to me he's like, cross, hey, he's like i'm just better at denial than you are <laughs> yeah. he, you know i i cross the streams like in ghostbusters <laughs> it's like you know when when i was doing the music like well you can't act and do music and i was i just didn't understand why i couldn't do that and then it was about well you can't do this and then do broadway that's just not how it works and so all these kind of things you know uh when just, we started actors weren't really directing so much no, um, and now that i have to say that we've really yeah. evolved and yeah, um as, really as, as as in the entertainment community yeah, and really and i think the streaming services have helped also to sort of to to make it an easier flow to move from yeah. one you know one side of the camera to the yeah. other yeah. but you're right that was a really big no as a matter of fact we actually yeah. had to go to france before somebody would let michael direct something because he was really? the most popular in france than anywhere else in the world at the time and we thought well, where's my here accent here can we go where you have the most heat yeah and that was france yeah yeah and we developed a, a pilot uh with tf1 um it took quite a while because everything had to be written in english transferred translated back into french and then back into English again, and we had to do it in two languages, and shoot, and they, shoot in two languages, and it was a, it was a, an adventure, but it was a great experience, and that really got the ball rolling. That's for us. yeah, that was actually and the first. From there, the first we, were, real we were off and running. Well, Michael, I mean, I I completely understand it because I can't walk the streets in Japan. I mean, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm joking. 
was gonna, I was gonna say I've seen you before. No. I was in Japan. I saw pictures of you everywhere. It's, it's funny. It's funny. I was doing the the uh, the alcohol ads, the the whiskey ads, just like um, just like Bill oh, Murray did in those translation. Yes. I did one of those with John Travolta. Come to hide. Did you did you do you must have an insane amount of stories? I mean, things you could say on air and things you could say off air. <laughs> she was riding horses in, in commercials, knife I, knife wheeling, but, ice pick wheeling. Uh no, but the Can't You High commercial was yeah. was back when so celebrities were doing J Japanese commercials when you didn't do television commercials in America back yeah. then. Yeah, back right. when you no no for, yeah. for an alias. And there was no YouTube or there was no internet, so it stayed in Japan. Exactly. Yeah, Nobody exactly. knew that they were doing them. Yeah. Except oh, I, 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 you're giving away John Travolta's secrets now. I mean, come on. Uh, tr trust me. He's, he's fine. He's done he's okay. okay. He's, 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 he's going to be all right. Okay. <laughs> I think I think the cat's out of the bag on that one. That's all right. I think yeah. <laughs> No, Thank you. So, Thank you. I remember Quentin doing some like commercials over because in Japan he, he was huge after all the you know Pulp Fiction and all that stuff, and he would do commercials over there too. And I've seen some of them. It's just like the weirdest. They have weird commercials in Japan. <laughs> I mean, just. We <laughs> well, was your was yours you know, weird? It was weird. It was at the Hilton Estate in the pool, and we had um for some reason they put bunny tails on us and fifties swimsuits and beach balls. Sure. And I'm trying to remember what John was doing. And Dancing. then there was another one where we were riding rockets. And this was on the sound stage. We we did a couple with him, and they put these crazy um, wigs, and they put only bottom fake eyelashes on us. It was really you know, and they were like fashion forward. <laughs> That's, that's a very polite way of saying it's weird. <laughs> the director, they said, "Put this on," and you said, "Okay." <laughs> so, uh, so once you got it, once you got that first production off in France, um, which is is fascinating because I've heard that from so many actors that they go overseas because they can't, they won't get a shot here. But overseas, they're much more open. Even back then, two actors are like, "Oh yeah, he's a big star here because we've been watching him and you know all that kind yeah. of stuff." After you got done with that, did that open the door here? For some projects well no because then we were back in america and then the nose kept coming but you just have yeah. to keep pushing you know just, so yeah. so let me ask you this then how did you guys keep moving forward? i always love asking that question how did you guys keep moving forward when you keep constantly getting nose and nose and nose and i remember that time i remember you know i was a, i was young coming up in the 90s uh as a director and i remember everyone was you had to be in a box you couldn't move back and forth between things, you know, like I was, I came up in the commercial world and like, if, if I happened to do a Spanish language commercial, my agent would tell me you're done. You have to, then you can't do general market. I'm like, what, what? Like, oh, we can't, we, you, you didn't get the job. Why? Because you never had, you never shot anything with any dialogue in it. I'm like, just, it's I, a camera, just speak. I could, I, I don't, it didn't, it didn't make any sense to me. Like you have to like, everyone's so boxy and everything. So how did you, during that time? Well, well actually, we indie movie. well, actually let's back up just a little bit. If you don't mind, we, we did a short film and this was really great. We, we put together a short film. So we had some in the show and Janine produced it and, and I directed and we wrote it, but what was great about it was that Janine did all of the producing and the line producing. So she literally had to learn on the fly, hire everybody, ensure the film, every camera single piece of equipment, the grip trucks, this. I mean, she she really it was like a super master's quick class on on you know how to produce and you know run a budget. And, and I was, you know, doing the same thing. We were working together and we picked a lot of people's brains. I was over at Burns and Sawyer, uh, harassing them. there every day. After Young and the Restless. Shoppers. Yeah, I would leave Young and the Restless. I would do my, shoot my scenes. That was his, that was his yeah. school. And I'd go over there and I would, <laughs> I would just harass them. Uh, they were so nice to me. And I just, I said, can you, can I see the inside of the 35 millimeter? Okay. Now what, now what is this now? How do we load this? And these guys were, they were showing me everything. And I just sat and learned how to load, uh, learn how to shoot, bought my own cameras and started shooting. And we, and we were, so, and we started making stuff, you know. So then, then I guess our, the first project that yeah. we did in America was, was that we, we, but then we came back and we raised money well michael raised money and we shot an indie film it was like well no one's gonna go in yeah. and then we sold it after yeah we did a very and then, modest then we were off and running yeah we did a modest you know uh indie film uh met a fabulous producer uh named brad cravoy who makes a lot of movies you know brad dumb and dumber he's the guy that made that mm -hmm. film happen 
And so, he, he bought the movie. Yeah. And so he bought that short film and sold it worldwide. And then we, we've been working together we, ever since. Yes. We worked with him on Falling for Christmas. So yeah. Yeah. We, it's, he's actually, Brad was the one who yeah. was the big turning point in our career. Yeah. And then Brad, Brad introduced us to 20th Century Fox. Fox hired us for the Flickas, the prequel to Marley and Me. Uh, and so uh, we just sort of, again, networking through people and working with people and building up, uh, you know, you just have to, you gotta, it's great that where we started and we were able to, to, you know, inch up the budgets and get higher and higher with the budgets and take on bigger responsibilities. And uh, it's been- it's But been still really understand good. the value of- And understand the, the value. Because when you raise your own money and you're working on that, it really teaches you a, a lesson on- Oh yeah. On and, and really how to, and putting your own personal money into, into it. And we've learned a lot. Which, about, which you don't do. Don't do that. Don't do that. No, well, no, no. We don't do that anymore. We used to. <laughs> we used to. <laughs> no, but we used to. And it, but but it really helps you yeah. respect. Uh, of course. Respect every dollar you put into a film. And that's why, uh, you know, we're always asking a lot of questions about stuff. And can we get this? And do we have to? And, you know, what's that going to cost? And is there any other options? Because uh, we love it, but it's too expensive. Uh, right. Exactly. Yeah. It's, uh, well, it's, it's nice that Brad was like the 800 pound gorilla in the room that kind of opened the door. And you know, you need everyone needs a champion. Everyone needs a champion. I mean, and it's many times I've interviewed so many filmmakers on this show, Oscar winners and everyone in between, they they always have a champion. They always have either a, someone who's crazy, like the yep. producer of Oliver Stone, who's like, go <laughs> make, go make this Vietnam movie. Here's six million. Nobody would give it to him for 20 yeah. years. And they yep. and then he goes off and makes platoon and then the rest is here. So you have to have a crazy eight hundred pound gorilla or or an eight hundred yep. pound gorilla who's very skilled or both. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna yeah. see something in you, you know. Yeah. I, exactly. I think and and Brad was like, I really would love a Christmas script. Can you write a Christmas script? And so that brings said, me okay. to my, my next question: <laughs> What is this, this obsession with Christmas, guys? Seriously, you're out of control. Like, no, I just. <laughs> No, I look well, at your I look at your filmography. I'm like Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. I'm like, I think I, I think I see a pattern here. So if this is what I mean. It's it's great and it's fun. And I see the I mean obviously the Marley and me and the Flickas and that thing. But then recently it's just been Christmas, 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 Christmas. I know the new movie coming out with Lindsay's next one is the 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 Irish bride, the bride movie. Which Irish is even, wish. Yeah. I, yeah, it's exactly. Not a Christmas movie. Not no, a Christmas movie. Yeah, not summer. a Christmas movie. Yeah. So we. Anyway, yeah. So go ahead. Go ahead. What, no, what got you? Not out of yeah. For, no, no. It's a like, well. Well, we well we love doing Christmas movies. So I mean, you know, the first one was because we actually love Christmas and and are big fans of, of, of Christmas just, movies. Yeah. And we thought, well, let's make one and see if everybody will watch ours every year. Yeah, let's do it you like know? at a castle, and let's go to Europe and shoot it at this beautiful castle. And see, let's find someplace. And, pretty and Brad said, and... "Go off. I'm going to send you. I found. He you, sent you, us to Romania. Go to a castle. There's a castle in Romania, and here's here you go and make the movie." And it was he eight, got us, uh, you know, Roger Moore. Got us Roger Moore. We, we found we, Sam Hewitt. Sam Hewitt. It was awesome. Yeah, Sam. Sam. Nobody knew who Sam was, and we were telling back to the states. We're like, we have this. This guy is amazing, and he's going to be a megastar. And like, oh, really? Uh, like, yeah, yeah. And Sam is obviously has you know exploded. And uh, but as Janine said, Roger Moore. I mean, Brad is like, I know Roger Moore. Do you want James Bond in the movie? Like, yes. How do we get him in this movie? And and uh, so it was a it was an awesome movie, and it went number one. So then we be, then we were sort of you know we were proven in Christmas films and had a lot of requests for a lot of Christmas. Yeah, requests. and so um, go where the work is, and they're beautiful and Sweet. fun and they're inspiring and hopeful and um, so why not? You know, <laughs> you go where the work is. Hey, you know, if you people like what. You, you know, it's that's the that's one of the big mistakes I've heard from a lot of people on the show that I've talked about. They're like they get a big hit in something and they're like, uh, Christmas. No, I I want to do horror now. I don't want to do Christmas. But I just want to go into horror films because that's where my passion is. Like, no, just stick to Christmas a little bit longer and then go off and make something else up. But you have to establish yourself on a path of success yeah. before you can start, you know, yeah. you know, so playing bait. In other words, Michael Jackson can jump. Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan could jump from basketball to baseball because he was Michael Jordan. He shouldn't have. We all agree, but he, but he could because he had established himself. Yep, he took as, the shot. Yeah, yeah. 
You're right. Yeah. You're right. Guy, I forgot about that. that yeah, but remember that? Like, but imagine after his rookie year, he's like, you know what? I know I'm like the greatest, but I, I really want, you needed a little time. So that's a, a lesson that people should take away. If you're lucky enough to have a lot of success in one arena, stay stick with it. Um, and you got to love it too. It seems like you guys do love it though. You do love the Christmas. We do stuff. love it. I mean, if it was if it was something that we were really unhappy doing, then yeah. I'm sure that we would, you know, look another way to kind of transition out but we really we yeah. really do like we love we, we love rom-coms in general and also what's happened is is that rom-coms sort, sort of had you know they sort of kind of fell out of fashion and they're now coming back again but they but christmas is always rom-com yeah. so has, yeah. so for us yeah. we thought well that's great well we can stick with rom-com you know if, it, if we stay in christmas then we can still do our rom-com i mean now exactly. it's starting to have a resurgence again so um, so Irish Wish is not Christmas, and it's still a rom com, <laughs> right? Exactly. And 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 the days of of when Harry met Sally and Sleepless in Seattle, where oh, the studios yeah. were making these big yeah. rom coms, they don't like. Or My Best Friend's Wedding, the, those don't exist anymore in the studio system. Not really. Now it's all Netflix, Hallmark, uh, mm-hmm. you know, these mini yeah. studios. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Yep. They're the ones. Yeah, they're the ones making the, the rom coms, and the the bigger studios are more on the franchise, uh, franchise action. Uh, you know, I mean, I think well, Amy Schumer is doing stuff and, you know, Rebel Wilson a little bit. You know, I mean, I think they're starting to kind of come back in a more offbeat way, but, you know, not quite the classic rom-com like they were back then. But um, Irish Wish is, is, I think, more what the, what people are thinking of when they think of Lindsay yeah. Lohan. Yeah, that's, I think that's it's right. exactly what the fan base is looking for. Because it's not the Christmas genre. It really is more of a classic rom-com. Yeah. So let me, let, let's talk about your, your latest film, Fall, uh, Falling for Christmas, which I, I saw on Netflix before I even knew you because like my, my wife and I were looking. I'm like, oh, this will be a great family film. And we've got the girls there and we started watching it. And it's just a fun, you know, Saturday night, you know, everyone around around the campfire kind of watching movie. And it was so, it was so beautiful. It looks gorgeous. Uh, and I was I was asking you before we got on. I'm like, is that a real place? Did you build the sets? Like, and I'm like analyzing. I'm like, it. it I think it's because my wife was like, I don't know. It looks. I think it's real. I'm like, yeah, I think it's real too. So I like, but there's some <laughs> sets there. They built some stuff there, but it's not like a completely. It's not the Grinch that stole Christmas, built yeah. the entire world scenario. Yeah. <laughs> Right. But it was, yeah. but it was beautiful. So, how did that? How did 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 Netflix get involved first, or did you make it and then get Netflix? How does that work? No, this was our first movie with Netflix, and we were really excited when they uh, they approached us yeah. um, with the script and Lindsay attached. So, oh, nice. um, yeah. So we and were, with Brad, our, our wonderful Brad, yeah. Gamble, <laughs> the eight hundred pound gorilla. Yes, <laughs> and we all came together. Yeah, and we yeah, we, and uh, they wanted to sh- and and what was great was that Lindsay's schedule worked out so that yeah. we could shoot it actually in December. So we shot it in the snow yeah, in, in the Utah, Deer Valley, Park City, um, Midway. Yeah. So we were able to actually shoot it in the snow. So that made it just that much more authentic. And the locations that you're talking about are extraordinary because what we found was a gem. It's the Goldner Hirsch in Deer Valley. Is they have the Austrian side. And then they just built this spectacular modern side and there's a passer rail between them. And, you know, not to give away all the secrets and the magic of it, but we had some stuff at our, that was real physical right there that we had at our disposal that we could really uh, dress and, and, and work with those structures. And they were, and they were so close in proximity that we didn't have to move our base camp. So we were able to shoot. So we, so our days, we were able to use our, um, our days actually shooting as opposed to moving around. (laughs) And then we found the beautiful North Star Exterior is this charming inn in Midway, Utah called Blue Boar Inn. And we, uh, that's the one, you know, the, the, the North Star exterior mm-hmm. you saw, that's the Blue Boar Inn. And it's, and and we did build like the- you We know, built the, a little stable for the horse. And the, and and, the work shed. And they're still there, they, they kept them. They asked if they could keep them. And we said, <laughs> sure. It's more expensive to tear them down. We didn't tell them that part. No, we just right. said, look. And, and it's so fun because we go visit uh, the Blue Boar Inn. And you go, you sit and you have brunch and then there's Balthazar. There's our sets you know, right his, there. <laughs> his little stable right there. <laughs> He's a private little dining area. <laughs> so, and this and this film, is it, if I'm not mistaken, it went to number one, right? On Netflix? Yeah, yeah. It went number one on Netflix um, in the world. And then I think That's it went cool. number one of all streamers. Of all streaming, of all the Of all streaming well. services. That's in insane. World. How did you guys feel after you, I mean, that's, that's a pretty decent accomplishment. 
That was, it was, that was huge. We were really excited. <laughs> <laughs> we popped some champagne for sure. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, Lindsay is such a wonderful actress. I mean, I've been a fan of her since uh, since she was a kid. And I've, I've spoken to some of the directors who worked with her on like Freaky Friday and and uh, Parent Trap and those kind of things. But she's such a fantastic actress. Uh, and, and in this project, she was, she was, she was great. She, and she has this fan base that just love her, obviously, because yeah. I saw it. I was like, oh yeah, Lindsay, yeah. She's one of those people that we all recognize. We all remember, and we all generally have fond memories of the work that she did, you know, when she was coming up. And I think that's one of the reasons why everyone just gravitated to this film and made it number one around the world, no less. Yes, you know, and it's multi generational her her fan base, and then yeah. the young people um, are embracing Mean Girls again, and so, yeah, so that's right, Mean Girls. I forgot. Yeah, everybody's kids and grandkids, and so her her fans. I mean, when we were in Ireland, her fans were young. Like, yeah. There's all these little schoolgirls in their little they're uniforms like, they're like with their 13, signs. Yeah, they're like 13, 15 years old. Signs. You no, know, her she, hundreds of them on, you know, on the streets. Yeah, we were like, wow, where are these? How do they know her? And and like you said, so her. she just crosses over and yeah. and um, well deserved because she really is an amazing talent, and we're so yeah. excited that she's decided to come back. Right, exactly. And then yeah, now you have the new movie coming out, which I'm excited to look. I, mean, I love rom coms. It's like one of my dirty, not uh, the deep secrets. I just love watching rom coms. <laughs> my dirty <laughs> secret. I just love watching. You it's like rom coms, but it's a dirty secret. It's a dirty <laughs> secret. I don't you know. It's like. <laughs> that and um and boy bands like I like listening to boy bands. Oh. What am I gonna do? Well, I mean, come on, I don't care. Leave the comments if you want, guys. I don't care. I wear it with pride now. <laughs> best friends, the best one, right? I swear. Oh no, stop it! Don't get me started. I, I'm not. You're not gonna get me to sing it on air uh, because then it'll become a meme, and I'm not gonna let that happen. But... <laughs> stop it! It's already in my head. I can't. Hear. Uh, I'll be there. <laughs> no, I won't be there. Uh, but. <laughs> But um, so I always like asking directors uh, this and producers this, what was the worst day on set? Meaning like we all have that day that the entire world's coming crashing down around us because that's production. So what was that day for you and how did you overcome that challenge? I know the day. Well, what happened okay. was is that we had no snow and it was oh. December and we all did a snow dance. Oh yeah. And then it snowed so much that, the, that we couldn't get anybody the up, crew the couldn't mountain. Get up the mountain. Everybody was stuck down at the bottom of the mountain. And we and Janine and I stayed so, at the top of the mountain. So we lost a half a day. And so we're like oh. And also none of our background talent made it up. Yes. Sir. So we had to figure out how to Yeah, we we had all the crew had to step in and be and be background for I was, us. I was in a scene, remember? I got my, my Yeah, my it was you know? <laughs> but it was we really I mean, it's really hard to maneuver yeah. in a lot of snow. Yeah. And um so Do you remember the market, the Christmas market? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. You know the breath that was coming out? It was 10 below zero. I was gonna say, you know what? My I literally said my wife, my wife looking at it because we're she's she's become a visual effects expert all of a sudden uh okay. over the years after being with me. So like she's like, awesome. is that and she's like, is that real? And I go, they didn't have the budget. This is no way they had the budget to do that digitally. That's not that that's real. So it's really that cold. I'm like, I promise you it's probably that cold. And it was. It was. It was. It and was. all that snow. And we were in a watershed, so we weren't allowed to make any snow. Yeah. So that's why we all had to do the snow dance. We couldn't put any snow on the trees. We couldn't put any, any on, the ground? on the synthetics. We couldn't do any synthetic anything. Nothing. Or the soap yeah. bubbles. We couldn't do anything. So yeah. we are, So here we are with a Christmas market, no snow. And then all of a sudden, it just yeah. dumped. It snowed three feet. And uh, then we couldn't get anybody up there. We were all excited <laughs> about the snow. And then we couldn't get anybody up there or any of the equipment. But anyway, so that was the most challenging day. Yeah. But So we had to shoot really fast because we lost a half a day. Yeah. Um, uh, and that's always, so in other words, you showed up with 150 shots on your shot list and you shot 10, basically. Yeah. <laughs> 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 exactly. Exactly. Okay. Wide shot here. Move the camera yeah. there, and we're out, boys. Let's we're go. Not, okay. Move on. Next scene. <laughs> move on. Okay, move we don't on. have the five hundred extras. We have fifty. Okay. So uh, let's put them all over here. And now when oh, we're done, let's get them in other jackets and move them over here. <laughs> I did that all the time. But it's like, that's the best. I mean, you don't need five hundred. I mean, unless you're Ridley Scott. I mean, yeah. you don't need five hundred. You need a good well, twenty or thirty. Lighting. Just yeah. fill the screen. Just fill the frame. That's all you need. We wanted, a, we we wanted the, <laughs> that when you watch it, that you can't tell. Yeah. <laughs> no, I couldn't. I couldn't tell at all. No, that was a beautiful little Christmas town. Yeah, we we did get. We finally they they came up and what was great is that they actually made it 
but it was now 11 o'clock at night. And, and, then, and then we weren't allowed to and sing. And then they so said we long. can't play music after 11. So we had the whole singing <laughs> and the fireworks and with everybody <laughs> singing and they were all there to sing. And then we couldn't sing because we couldn't play music. So we just kind of, did, you know, it's one of those. We just said, just ask forgiveness. Sing. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> we, we said, we, Let, let's just crank up the music once. We'll probably, once. We'll probably get one take at this. Let's just turn around, to put it on 11, go to 11, sing everybody until they just say stop you know the, the until they pull the power plug on us you know so. but you know it was christmas and it was a christmas song and everybody loved it yeah so nobody it complained cool. actually they were so worried about the people in the condos complaining but nobody was complaining it's, they were it's so not cool. like hard it's not like thrash metal you guys were singing, no, we were singing that was joy, joy to, to the, the world. world joy to the world if you and, shut not, and not yeah. joy to the yeah. world no and if you shut us down on joy to the world i mean what kind no, of town is, is this I mean, you're gonna go straight to hell i mean you're going straight to hell at that point i mean what's the point now another question i love asking um you know especially couples who work together how do you balance i mean because it's insane to be in the film industry how do you balance the work relationship with the personal relationship especially on set because on set is a stressful place production is a stressful place Feelings get hurt, egos get crushed. You know, how do you, especially working so closely together as a producing directing team, how do you balance that for other other teams out there might be listening? Do you want to say something? Well, you know, go ahead, you say something. Oh, I, I think that it starts with the fact that we have very similar um artistic tastes and tendencies. And so our vision tends to be a cohesive. Yeah. idea um and we don't really argue a lot about stuff because we we tend to like the same things and we and yeah. we tend to want and, and right. a lot of and especially because we write you know most of the stuff or at least rewrite and polish we, we, everything we do um we're so close to it we've already yeah. worked through it so we finish a lot of thoughts in writing like we'll be writing and she'll start a sentence and then i'll just it just comes out i'm finishing and then she's Perfect. And then I and then and then she does the other character and then we start to have a dialogue and we start acting out the scenes right there in the office. And so it's well between uh, the script and then pre-production, yeah, really we are really, yeah. um we like we're really specific about everything that we want to put on screen. So by the time yeah. that we finally get there, I think that we have a pretty good a pretty good yeah. idea and we don't really have a lot to fight about except for fight for something together. Exactly. That makes, that, makes uh, sense. that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Um, let me ask you, if there was something that you guys could say, each of you, if you can go back in time and tell your younger self one thing about this business, a warning, if you will, just a little piece of advice at the beginning of the career, what would that be? Well, I would say, I would say if you really believe in yourself, and you really believe in something and 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 know it to be true, you've I, I you're gonna hear a lot of stuff down the road. And I'll give you my quick probably my quick story on that, which is my record. When you say that's probably the best about No, he's saying if you were gonna tell yourself something something different. Something oh, award like you. something like, you know, guys, it's gonna it's gonna be it's oh, gonna I thought it was warning other people. I thought it was warning other people of something no. that happened to me. No, no, no. Warning so, like you personally can go back in time with Marty McFly. You talk to your 16-year-old self and you're thinking about getting into this business, and you go, listen, guys, you're gonna have a hell of a ride. I can't tell you anything else, but the one thing you should wor wor be weary about is it's gonna take a long time. Uh you're gonna have to write. Uh don't eat carbs. I, I don't know. <laughs> I would say the sooner that you can figure out what what it is, what your yeah. passion is, and what it is that you want to do, that's a good um, go for it. And yeah. it may it may not present itself right away, but really pay attention to what is meaningful to you in yeah. in whatever industry you know within the industry. I wish that I would have paid more attention, and I wish that I would have transitioned out of dancing sooner, um, or at least while I was while I was. On camera, I would have paid more attention to what was going on on camera, even, because, but I didn't know that that's where I was going to go. So you I don't went to be with Michael Jackson, and you went to be with <clears throat> Coppola and Lucas and all those great people. So you I would can't say don't, really, uh, don't waste your youth. Don't waste yeah. your youth. Oh my so God. Like, Seize the moment. No, really. I mean, if you want to go yeah. into the entertainment industry, yeah. the sooner you know that yeah. you can get in and get work experience and actually dive in there yeah. and and not yeah. and not wait for stuff to come to you. 
I don't know. That's what I would say to myself. That, that, make, that makes perfect sense. Now, I'm going to ask you a few questions I ask all of my guests. What advice would you give a filmmaker trying to break into the business today? Be tenacious. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And creative. Be creative. And, and, if it, you know, and if one door doesn't open, find another door because there's a lot of doors available I, now. I would say get on a movie set as fast as you can. Yeah. I don't care where you're going to be because Janine and I have elevated people on our sets that came in and had no experience. And we just said, you know what? This young person should be over with the production and design team. They're, 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 they're getting us coffee and this person needs to be over there learning. Cause we saw what we saw what was happening. You know what I mean? And so don't get, you think get they, on a set and be, get, and be a really yeah. good troubleshooter and yeah. um, be, you be will a, elevate quickly. Yeah, exactly. And be yeah. open and listen and anybody just, any department, engage with them, you know, don't harass them, but you know, like I did with, with Burns and Sawyer about the camera, you know, how do, what's that sprocket doing? No, but you know, you know, there's a point where you're annoying, but but just really be there and be present and listen and pay attention um, is, is so important and have positive energy on the set. Mm. Don't you? Don't yawn. Don't yawn. That's a Please. really big one. Yeah, don't ever yawn. Really try not to yawn. Go outside, go away, go go in the outhouse or something and yawn, but just don't let anybody see you yawning on a set. <laughs> now, what is the lessons that took you the longest to learn, whether in the film industry or in life? It's a good question. I okay, mine's the opposite of Michael's, and that okay. is to to be confident in myself. That I believe I, in yourself I, more. That believe in myself and that I am I am prepared and I am yes. I am worth it. So that it took me a long time to have a lot of confidence in my stuff. Michael's the most confident person I've ever met. My <laughs> problem is, is that me that. too much. I was, just, I was just naive. I just thought you, you know, my my parents just instilled that they just said, if you're gonna do it, go, you know, do it. go all the way. Do not ever quit anything i don't care what it is the only thing i did quit i, I want to tell you is that i had a paper route and i had to quit because the dogs attacked me every time i went <laughs> down the road my pants were shredded sorry i just i've never told anybody in any interview that's the only thing i quit <laughs> but but you, but you, didn't, you didn't answer the question what was the question, <laughs> the question is, <laughs> so basically so basically alex, the question. alex remind me the question <clears throat> <laughs> what is the lesson that took you the longest to learn, whether the film industry or in life? The longest to learn. I would say probably, uh, um, not to echo you, but I think I think a lot of it was learn, really just learning and paying attention, and and really picking up all the all the nuances on the set. I I could have learned a lot more. Um, I I did learn, but I think if I would have I guess I didn't know I was going to be on the other side of the camera. I would have been, I would have been paying a little more attention to certain things, but um, uh, gosh, did anything good that? answer. It's a good answer. That's a He's, good answer. See what I said. And, and and also never underestimate the uh, the power of naivete. Uh, it is it is a and very denial. Power. Denial is not. It's a I, gift. I, 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 it is a gift. It is a gift. But also <laughs> the um the thing I always tell people is like there is an there's an insanity to what we do. Uh, it's insane. It's insane. Yeah. It's insane to get a whole bunch of people together, try to tell a story and you know, up a hill with snow. And like, there's just, a, it's an insanity to even believe that we could do this in the first place. So you need that to even just get in on the field to play. Uh, but then when you're, you have denial and you have naivete, like you're completely clueless along the way. But it's very powerful, but extremely dangerous. Yeah, <laughs> you don't even right, right. I came along. <laughs> no, but what you got me for no, you just that's you got such learn. a good team. You no, you gotta learn why are we all such a good team? This is why you need yeah, balance. You, yeah, you gotta you gotta know your stuff, and we're we we like to have a lot of fun, but we're really detail oriented. We have a plan every single minute, and of you know, and and of course the plan is going to go right out the window the minute you get on the set. And we now find out that we can't shoot this way because now all the wind is blowing the blue screen into the set. And now we have to shoot another thing and you've got to learn how to adapt quickly. The most important thing is keep the train moving. Don't panic. 
find a way to adapt and always keep rolling camera. It's really, uh, when I see people just stop and, and everything just grinds to a halt, it's painful. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes yeah, it's necessary, but try, to, try to keep shooting, find solutions, find something to shoot, find solutions and find something to shoot. Cause it, the clock it, it's in the taxi with the meter running and Oof. you've got it at the end of the day, time is the enemy. Time is the, you know, the enemy, but um, constantly, you know, have a plan, but be prepared for the unexpected. And I think that's what happens almost every day on the set, to be honest with you. And three of your favorite films of all time. Days of Heaven. Star Wars. The Natural. Um, <laughs> Field of Dreams. <laughs> oh, I love Field of Dreams. When's your baseball movie coming out, Michael? You like those? <laughs> Alex, you like those three? I love I love all three of those movies. Okay, but when sorry. is the, but when is, but when is the baseball Romeo, movie coming Frank out? Frank Zeffirelli's Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> yep. And um, Days of Heaven, Romeo and Juliet. And Except well, because these just these were sort of life forming experiences for me. So, and then also a star is born, the bar was twice in one. Oh, okay. Uh, All right. That's a good, that's a, those, that's a good, that's a good set. Those were, the ones that I, those were the ones that made me want to get into the film. Can I throw a fourth in there? Sure. Reese. Oh, yeah. That was the one that when I sat in that theater, it just, oh man, I just. I mean, you want to talk about suspense of disbelief though you were 45 year olds playing teenagers. I mean, seriously. <laughs> yeah, I mean seriously. I mean seriously. What was it? Was it um Candid? Was that what's what's her name? Um, Stalker Channing. She was like thirty three. Talking about Olivia Newton John. I didn't know. We listen. I didn't know no, about the nobody knew. No, I didn't I know. Care. I love that movie. But yeah. like, like we go back and like, they're they're like fifty. What is going on? <laughs> and why are they flying away at the end into the sky? That was never established. Oh, yeah. Like, what's going on? Yeah, it's the best. Um, it's also, so good. I asked all those questions just so you know. I liked Grace, but I did want to know what was with the age she, thing and why like they you. Often... She was asking me all these. I was like, I don't really care. I just love the movie. Oh, no, just no. no. I'm, I, I'm stuff. like, Michael, I'm like you. I completely suspend disbelief. My wife, on the other hand, is like, that's not the way it would happen. And I'm like, it's, it's good. Would you just. Can you just enjoy? Can you suspend a little disbelief? Like we need to watch movies together, Alex. You and I need to watch movies I mean, together. Because What's I just watch name. My my Marie Cruz. She but she's like she just watches it and she like ruin stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> oh no! I'm like, it's it's like, oh, that's not the way a doctor's office would be. Because I'm like, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I just let me enjoy. Like she's ruined many a movie for me, and I'm very careful now. Like. This is okay. So I, I forced her to watch Star Wars. Okay, Michael, I forced all six of them. It, it, this is years ago, years ago when we first started dating. And at the end, she goes, I go, she's like, you know, Darth Vader is kind of a punk. And I'm like, how do you, what do you mean? She's like, he, you know, he's basically the, 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 the um, emperor's like, you know, you know, like lap dog. And uh, he goes around intimidating people with his deep breathing and choking people out with his imagination. I don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, that is really amazing description of Darth Vader. He intimidates I, I, people with his deep breathing good. and chokes people out with his imagination. Absolutely I was just funny. like, you know what? I think so. You want to talk about balance? There's the balance. There's you always I need the Star balance. I, I love Star Wars, too, though. Thank you. I do. <laughs> I, I like Star. I love. Star I sneak Wars, I love. All, um, I sneak off, and and, I, and all of a sudden I hear Jenny like, "Are you watching Star Wars again?" It's either that or Indiana Jones, and I oh, love, I love Indiana yes. Jones. Okay, I, I really. I love was going to add Jones. that as my fourth, my fifth film, Indiana. Yeah, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, I, I did see the new trailer. I, oh. I'm. I just came out. It just came out like uh, twenty hours ago. I. It looks really nice. It looks good. I enjoy. I, it looks good. I'm I, James Mangold is the director, so awesome. It, it, I have high hopes. I have high hopes that he's not going to be blown up by a nuclear bomb in a refrigerator uh, this time. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, we could keep geeking out about movies forever, guys. I appreciate you coming on the show. It was such a pleasure talking to you guys. Continued success. I can't wait to to see Lindsay's new movie and your new movie when it comes. When's that coming out? By the way. Uh, Irish Wish. Um, yeah. Oh, we don't have a release date. Well, we're just editing it now, so um, I, yeah. I I think they'll it'll be forthcoming the yeah. release date, but we're not sure yet. Twenty twenty three. Twenty twenty three. Yeah, we're we're we'll be done 
probably around April, May with, you know, when we picture lock and color and sound music and all that should be around May, April, May. Yeah. So all right. After that. Well, guys, continue <laughs> success. And it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you guys. Uh, thank you so much for thank coming you. on the show. Thank, thank you so much, much for having us. Thanks,